Hi there, and welcome to my live video. And this is episode two of View from the Other Side. Today, I'm going to talk about what some people call a life review. If you've let, read a lot of or watched uh, videos or documentaries on near-death experiences, people, a lot of people experience something called a life review. I experienced something that I called a tapestry because it didn't quite feel like a life review. But I will explain a little bit in a minute as to why I think mine was different. But also, I think um, that this kind of thing is unique to each person. The person kind of gets it in the form that they need it. But I'll explain a little bit more about that in a few minutes after I tell you about my version of the life review, which came to me in the form of what I call the tapestry. I've written about it in my book, Dying to Be Me. Um, but I want to get a little bit deeper into it right now. So when I crossed over to the other side, um, you know, the first thing I felt was incredible love, just love, like unconditional love. I don't even like to use the word unconditional because, because if love is conditional, then it's not love. So we should just be able to say love, but yet it was of a depth that I've never experienced in physical life before. It felt like no matter what, I was loved just because I existed. I didn't have to do anything to prove myself. I'd spent a lifetime trying to prove myself and trying to win other people's love. And here I was now on the other side, and I was just flooded with this feeling of love. And I was surrounded by other beings. Um, and they were communicating with me. But as I went further, I was able to view my entire life. And I was able to understand things. Like I understood why my life had panned out the way it had. I understood why things were the way they were. And the way that I like to explain how I saw my life is if you imagine that there is a tapestry that is made of silk threads woven together, beautiful silk threads woven together. But imagine that this tapestry is so huge. It's like from, it's maybe as tall as a building, say, like maybe even a six, seven, eight story building or something. So huge from floor to ceiling, this tapestry maybe about 40, 50 feet wide or something. That's how huge. Now, if a tapestry is that huge, in order to take the whole picture in of what that tapestry is a picture of, in order to take it in, you have to stand really far back to take the whole thing in. And so it felt like what I was looking at was something really beautiful with lots of colors. It was the story of my life with lots of colors and just um, beautiful things happening. Like if, if you imagine, so just use your imagination and imagine if you're looking at a beautiful tapestry or picture of, of, of trees and meadows and the ocean and rainbows and sky. But you have to stand really far back to see the whole thing because it's so huge. As you get closer, you can only see what your peripheral vision allows you to see. So you get closer and closer. And when you come really close, you realize that this huge picture is made up of woven threads, silk threads that are woven together to make this huge tapestry. And then imagine if you then notice that one of those silk threads, just one of those thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of silk threads to make this massive ta ta tapestry. Maybe just one of them is you. It's your life. It's the trajectory of your life. And if you follow this trajectory of this one thread, you can see where it's touched other threads, which means other lives. And you can see where those threads go on to touch other lives. So this is kind of the analogy I used to describe what it felt like when I was looking back at my life. It felt like I was looking at this tapestry because 
when I looked at the whole, when I stood back and looked at my whole life and the way that I had touched other threads and those threads had touched other threads, the whole picture as a whole made sense. Even though when I was in the physical life and I was that thread, when I am in physical life, at the different points in my life, it feels like life doesn't make sense. It's like, why is this happening to me? Why am I sick? Why is, why is the world so crazy? It feels like life doesn't make sense. But from this view, this bird's eye view, or this view of standing way back, it's like, oh, life makes sense. And I am one of the threads in this massive, beautiful tapestry that makes sense when you can see the whole thing. And, my, and that one thread that is me, it's depicting the trajectory of this particular life. And every point in my life is one point on that silk thread. If I was to remove that one thread, it impacts the whole tapestry. So in other words, if you don't exist, it impacts the whole tapestry. It impacts all your family members, all your peers, all your friends, everybody you were at school with. You've changed a ton of lives if you're not there. And if you're not there anymore, you would change a ton of lives which you are still yet to impact. And those people go on to impact other lives. And, but you have somehow touched their life and changed it somehow. And as they go on to touch other lives, their lives are changed. So each one of us is super important in this huge tapestry. And that was one of the things that I really understood from seeing that tapestry. I understood how even the things that I thought I had done which were wrong, I could understand how they fit into the big picture. One of the things that I had done was that I had run away from an arranged marriage and I brought shame to a lot of people and um, particularly to the person I was meant to marry. and. Um, I felt a lot of guilt about it and a lot of shame and a lot of shame was brought on to me and my family for doing such a thing. Um, it took a long time, it took years and years to really get over that, the trauma of the shame. And I'm sure even the person I hurt, who I did it to, probably took them a while as well. Um, and, and I know that I'm saying that, uh, I know that that's not a good thing to do, but um, I dealt with it. In other words, I did have to deal with the shame and the repercussions that went with it. But from the other side, when I was on the other side, I expected to get punished for it or to get reprimanded. I thought that when we cross over, there's all this judgment for all the things we've done wrong. But instead, it was actually very, very compassionate, if you will. It wasn't, um, it, it wasn't like I was being judged or chastised by some external entity. There was compassion and understanding for why I did what I did. And I was even shown or even being led to see that even what I did had a positive impact in a different way. So on the one hand, I may have hurt a lot of people, but also what happened is that a lot of people, a lot of young women had the courage to stand up against arranged marriages after they saw what I did. I actually inspired many young Indian women from my culture to stand up against arranged marriages. They were able to tell their parents, like, um, look, what she did and I don't want to run like don't force me into marriage and so that I have to do what she did and and so I realized oh wow it also had a positive impact so the the tapestry was very very fair it didn't make me feel worse than I had already been making myself feel over here so that's what I'm trying to say is that sometimes we are harder on ourselves here than what happens on the other side in fact the other side is pure love pure love, pure love, and it's very gentle and very compassionate. 
and we are our own judges of everything we've done. And what I realized is that we don't actually judge per se. What we do is we have this clarity and understanding. We understand why we did what we did. And so I understood why the things that happened to me happened. I understood why I had cancer, why I got sick. I understood how my thoughts and decisions had contributed to me being on that hospital bed dying that day. And in a future episode, I will go much deeper into what I understood in terms of why I got sick, why my life turned out the way it did. I will go much deeper into all of these things in other episodes. I want to focus a little bit more on the, t on the life review and how other people experience this. So I think that I experienced a life review because uh, I experienced a tapestry and not the conventional life review because the way I died was a little bit different. I had been suffering for so many years already from the illness. I was already expecting to die. I was ready to embrace death. And so my death was a little bit different. Um, whereas I think that people who die very suddenly and unexpectedly, like for example, if it's a cardiac arrest or a car crash or something like that, or a, you know, or, or a fall or maybe a failed um, suicide attempt, and then they get revived and they come back and they say, I had a life review. It's usually very different because they didn't expect to cross over. And so they sometimes they'll experience the tunnel, which I didn't experience. And they'll experience a life review where they actually get to see their life. Um, the, it's like the story of their life, like watching a movie of their life. They get to see everything they've done and how it impacted other people and how it impacted them and what, what impacted people in a positive way and what impacted people in a negative way. I saw it as a tapestry, as I said, but I was able to very clearly see the things that I did that maybe I should have done differently. I was very clearly able to see the things that I did which I should have been happy about, but instead were beating myself up for because I was someone that was very hard on myself. So in that tapestry, I was able to review my life. So the end result, the net result, is very similar to someone who has the conventional life review, um, is what I feel. But what I also want to add here is that I think that being able to review your life is a beautiful thing. Because the other, here's the other thing that came out of it for me. When I was looking at the tapestry, I was able to see how I had not been honoring myself and who I am. I was able to see how I was um, always suppressing myself, how I had always been a doormat. Um, and in fact, those are the kinds of things that contributed to me getting sick. It contributed to me depleting my energy, making myself small so others could feel big, putting myself last, putting myself down, feeling inadequate, feeling like everybody else mattered more than I did. That was me. That was me before my near-death experience. And I could see in the trajectory of my life how I had done that for my entire life up to that point. I had made everybody else in my life more important than me. I had placed everybody else's needs above mine until I reached the point that I was diagnosed with cancer, which forced me to start looking at myself. That's what it took for me to look at myself. And even then, even when I was sick, I worried more about, I worried more about, um, being a burden on other people than I was about myself and my own illness. So even being sick didn't heal me from being a people pleaser and being more concerned about other people than me. It was death that healed me of that. And it healed because I was able to see it in the, my tapestry. I was able to see it that that was the trajectory of my life and my thread was I had spent a lifetime 
being everything for everybody else. And so when I was given a second chance at life, I knew that I was being given a chance to change that and to do it differently and to live a life where I would honor the spirit or the soul that comes through this body. Because that's what we are. You aren't just a physical body. When you don't honor yourself or love yourself, you're not just dishonoring your body. You're dishonoring the spirit, the soul, that has chosen to come to express itself through this physical body that you are in right now. And so honor that soul and review your life and ask yourself, have I allowed that soul to express itself through me? Or have I judged it and beaten it, beaten it up and suppressed it and prevented it from it being all that it can be? So what I, what I recommend people do is intermittently, it's to do your own life review. Don't wait until you die. Just do your own life review. Look back on your life and ask yourself, am I wasting my life? Am I spending way too many hours focusing on things that don't matter? Am I spending way too many hours on, on working? And, or if I look back on my life, like if today, if I crossed over today, um, and of course I'm not asking you to do that, so please don't cross over, just do a mock life review and ask yourself, are you satisfied with yourself? And it isn't about being more spiritual or doing more, uh, you know, being more cha charity focused, or it's not even about that. It's about allowing your spirit, your soul to express itself fully. It's about loving more. It's about having more joy in your life. These are the kinds of things that we regret when we cross over. It's really about being a fuller expression of who you are. So thank you for tuning in. I just wanted to mention that um, I do have a CD. Uh, a, a, sorry, it's a, not even available on CD anymore. It's a download audio. It's called the NDE, Near Death Experience Meditation. It's available on Amazon CD Baby, where I take people through the process of a, um, I take them through the process of a journey, a meditation that simu simulates a near-death experience where you get taken on a life review so that you get a chance to know what's important for you in this lifetime. Um, but you can do this on your own anyway with music. Just do your own little life review and ask yourself that if you look back on your life, what are you happy with? What do you wish you did more of? Who, what do you wish you spent more time doing? Do you wish you loved more? Do you wish you connected more? That you united with people? Do you wish you were less angry? Do you, so these are the kinds of questions you can ask yourself because those are the kinds of things that come up in your tapestry or your life review. So thank you all for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you all next week or around social media or my sanctuary. Can't wait to see you all again. Bye.